All right. Welcome back. We're here for another episode of Two Plane Sports, uh, another recruiting edition after a busy and a fantastic weekend for the Sooners overall. I mean, a better weekend than we could have ever hoped for. Uh, but before we get into it, we just want to say we really appreciate the last I mean, we've been growing like crazy, but really in the last seven to 10 days, it's been insane. You guys have been spreading the word. You guys have been subscribing. You've been liking. You've been commenting. And we really appreciate it. And we want to keep it rolling. We like having full-on conversations with you guys, hear what you guys have to say. And, um, you know, we hope you continue that and keep spreading the word. Um, you know, we can you can find us on Twitter and Instagram. Brandon and all of us have been running this Twitter, but mostly Brandon. That the Twitter's been going crazy. Uh and follow us on Instagram, all at two plane sports. If you don't like looking at us, I don't blame you go on Spotify. That's been growing as well. Uh, we're going to keep putting up there and we're going to be on Apple podcast here pretty soon. We're just having a few issues and we're going to get up there here, here pretty quick. So everyone else can see us that or listen to us that can't get Spotify. Um, so for today we're going to cover um, a bunch of recent commits and some people that visited this weekend. Uh, so we'll start off with uh, Michael Trigg and Jackson Dart. I think that's one of the most pressing topics as we record right now, you know, at 8.53 on, um, on January 17th. You know, at this point, nothing has come out as far as they're committing to either school, either Ole Miss or Oklahoma. Uh, they've visited both schools in the last, you know, five or seven, five or six days. Um, still haven't heard word, but it seems like it's it was trending towards Ole Miss and then now it seems like it could be coming back in Oklahoma's way it, it just kind of seems like a lot of people really don't know exactly what to expect it could go one one way or another it's tough to say uh, they didn't end up visiting TCU so that's a win that's one less school uh, do you guys have anything to, to add or what's your gut feeling on Dart and Trig uh, before we move on they've been posting a lot on their social media about uh, Oklahoma, especially Dart. So it seems like it's trending to, to Oklahoma, but we we don't know until we know, which is the unfortunate part of this whole uh, process. But hopefully we hear some good news from them soon. Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing. I mean, obviously you can't like too much into social media, but at the same time, I mean, I feel like it, it does say something, especially when these kids are 19, 18, 20 years old. And that's kind of like their way of telling everybody what they're going to do. Um, mm -hmm. Then Jackson Dart today specifically posted two pictures videos whatever uh, on his instagram and uh of him and OU stuff and he's got nothing on instagram yet as of this moment of Ole miss granted he has tweeted about Ole miss um but there's no there's nothing on instagram yet from Ole miss which you know again yeah. take that as you will we, we don't know anything yet yeah i will mention that OU is all in on jackson dart i'm pretty sure they have kind of moved on from caleb williams at this point because it's just and chubba committed to nebraska today so there's yeah no, don't worry about chubba yeah, Chubba Purdy's not going to be a Sooner. He's going to compete with Casey Thompson for that starting position. But Sooners are all in on Dart and Trig. Hopefully we find out in the next day or two because classes start tomorrow or as today as you're watching this video. They're just trying so, to get uh, out of his class. I don't blame him, you know, just delay it, it one last week, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right. Uh, another guy that visited in the last, you know, five, six days is Drew Sanders. He has since come out and said he is signing with the University of Arkansas. He's a hog. Sam Pittman, he is, um, that program is really turning around. They landed a great kid, um, someone that the Sooners definitely could have used. It's not the end of the world. It would have been nice to see him in the Crimson and Cream. Uh, it just seems like it's just not, it wasn't in the cards for whatever reason, which is what it is at this point. Uh, do you guys have anything to say before we move on to actual Sooner commits? No, you got it. Tough blow yeah. Yeah. is what yeah. it is. We move, we, we move. You know, you can't yeah. win them all, you know. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, what we're about to list off is a quite quite a haul. So uh, we'll start off. This is a little bit older uh, news. We just haven't gotten to it because it's just been so crazy. Uh, is Jonah Lualu, I believe I'm saying his name correctly, a uh, six foot six, 280-pound defensive lineman from Hawaii. He had four sacks and 21 tackles last season. So a very productive player for the Rainbow Warriors. Uh, he's originally from Las Vegas. I think DeMarco Murray's connection to that area is paying some dividends. Um, he's a three-year starter. He has two years of eligibility left because of COVID. Um, you know, he has he had offers from UCLA, LSU, Georgia. I mean, great, great programs. Um, and I think he's going to come in and compete with this, the spot that Perrion Winfrey 
is leaving open. Uh, Brandon, do you have anything to say about Luau? Yeah, no, I mean, the, the the size alone, as you mentioned, 6'6", 280, uh, eight sacks for his career. Uh, obviously, last year was his best year with four sacks. Um, I think he can push for that starting spot uh, that is, um, you know, left open with, with Perry and Winfrey's departure. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just another – big quality body uh, that can play in that D line and just keep it rotating. You know, Jeffrey Johnson just committed to, I think, I think it'll probably be t- between him and Luwalu for that, uh, that, that vacant spot. Um, but I think both kids can play. Uh, glad to have them both. Yeah. Luwalu is going to be um, definitely a guy that's going to be competing for that spot. Like you said, Brum, what was cool whenever I was reading up about him is that he started at tight end for Hawaii's bowl game in 2020 against Houston uh it was a New Mexico bowl they played in that year so I thought that was pretty cool I mean he I think he ended up scoring a touchdown or caught a couple passes and you know not he's not a tight end he was I don't think he was supposed to be there I'm not sure why that was happening in the first place but team player that's kind of what it signaled to me he's willing to do what is asked of him so um definitely expect him to be a guy that if if the coaches want him out on special teams which maybe on like the the kick return might be a guy that's there to just maul people up and make sure that the, the kick returner gets those five or six extra yards to, to put the offense in good field position or just be a guy that's going to be ready to play when his number is called if he's not a starter or one of the main rotation rotation guys he'll he'll make sure that he's ready to play and, and put all his effort in into each and every play he's in yeah my, my bold take with him is I know this is what he was listed at 280 when he was on the roster at Hawaii uh, I bet he is won't be 280. I bet he'll be higher, heavier. I bet he'll be 290 to 300 pounds by the time Schmidt gets done with him. That's just my gut feeling. I feel like they're going to beef him up a little bit. But, um, you know, Brandon, you mentioned another guy, and this is a great get, is Jeffrey Johnson to add along that defensive line. I mean, he's 6'3", 295. He's a nose tackle from Tulane, um, originally from Brockhaven, Mississippi. You know, he had nine sacks, 64 tackles in his four-year career at Tulane. He'll have one year of eligibility left. And we talked about it on, um, I believe, I don't know if it was the previous video, the one before, uh, because we covered so many different guys. Um, But he probably had his best game of the year against Oklahoma. And I don't know. I mean, I think we all remember that game. He was a problem, and he made Spencer Rattler very uncomfortable. And, you know, between Congle and Rain, they were struggling with him. Um, I'm excited that we got him. I know he was slated to go to USC after the visit. Didn't let him out of our backyard. Todd Bates and Venables locked him up. Jose, do you have anything to say about him? Yeah, we mentioned him briefly, I believe, in our in our last video. But it just shows the effect that Todd Bates has during his recruiting. He wasn't, you know, voted to be one of the best recruiters in, in 2019 for no reason. It's not just an arbitrary decision that that is made in that with that reward. He shows he can do the job and making sure kids stay on campus once he gets to talk to them and show them around. And this is this is a huge get to me. This is the guy that's really going to make an impact for next year in the, the middle of that defensive line because of how big he is and how talented he is in getting to the backfield, not just a, a run stopping. He'll be a big, big addition to next year's uh, defensive line. These these players on the D line, uh, and, and more specifically that defensive tackle spot, I think they just get freakier and freakier as each as you know these years develop. Because I remember watching football and a, a big DT, you know, when we were like in high school or middle school and stuff, is you know that six one two seventy, six one two eighty stuff. This dude's six four three thirty, and he moves like it's 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 freaky what what they're capable of. And, and obviously we mentioned what he did against Oklahoma last year, uh, ten sacks for his career at Tulane. Um, very good piece to, to have if, if, if he doesn't start he's, he's gonna he's gonna play a lot um it's gonna be a big rotation i think that it, at that dt spot specifically and he's gonna be factoring into that no doubt yeah i, I might have not had the exact weight right i must have had it a few years earlier but yeah six six four three thirty that sounds even better than 295 pounds um but that's well, it, the it, it could be different outlets that we're looking at too i'm looking at um Sports reference, college football. That's where I pull the stats from. They have listed at 6'3", 330. Still, 300 pounds either way. That wouldn't fly on the previous regime. Um, I'm happy to see a bigger guy like him coming to camp, coming on campus and not let him in our backyard. Um, now, someone just to mention along that defensive line before we move on to the other positions, that visit is Makai Wingo. He didn't end up committing. 
Um, he was originally from Missouri. He played one year, all SEC freshman. It looked like he had a great visit. He tweeted out about how great Todd Bates and Venables is. He's out at USC right now. I think he's coming home, you know, as of today, as in Monday and or Tuesday. Um, we should hear sometime soon. If, gosh, if the Sooners land him, that would be ridiculous. I feel like LSU is going to have a really good shot or maybe even USC, but I think LSU is going to be tough to beat. So um, do you guys have anything to say about him before? We he, move had, on to... he had super high praise for, for both Venables and Todd Bates talking about how, you know, just pretty much how classy they were and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's, let's hope that he means that stuff and uh, it's enough to sway his decision to come to Norman. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, already two defensive linemen. Why not add a third one? He he's the guy that in our last video we were talking about, he was the guy that we were most excited about in our one of our previous recruit, recruiting videos. So that's definitely a name that I'm going to keep an eye on and hope that he makes the right call. Yeah, it, he definitely was because I mean he only had you know only played one year at Missouri, so he had multiple years of eligibility left, and he was great for the Tigers last year. Um, Jose, do you have anything to say before we move on? Uh, just hope he he picks it the Sooners yeah we're gonna hear soon one way or another um a guy that, that we can you know just briefly brush over we we uh, haven't talked about in a while is TD Roof um you know he's five foot 11 224 pound linebacker from Appalachian State but then originally from Georgia Tech son of the defensive coordinator Ted Roof um you know he last season he had 41 tackles three sacks two picks one forced fumble he'll have one year of eligibility in my opinion He'll be special teamers, good depth at the linebacker position. I mean, I'm not saying he's, you know, he he doesn't push, you know, move the needle quite a bit, but, you know, maybe in some scenarios he'll be in some packages and, and whatnot, and he followed his dad to OU, and maybe he's getting a master's degree. I, I, you know, maybe he saw an opportunity. So do you guys have anything to say? Jose, do you have anything to say about him? He kind of just came in the wrong class. He should have transferred maybe like – the first time he transferred from when he originally started at, like you said, Georgia Tech and then transferred to Indiana, maybe would have been a better time to see if Oklahoma was in a position to take him because our linebacker death last year, something I kept mentioning was it, it's very, very hit or miss. Now we've gone from maybe one of the worst positions in regards to depth for Oklahoma to maybe the best on the, on the defensive side of the ball. And that just kind of pushes them further and further down. And like you said, not moving the needle because now with the, with Deshaun White coming back, Danny Stutzman is a guy that we were super excited about last year and is probably going to have a much bigger role coming into this year. And then all the freshmen coming in and all the early enrollees that just moved in kind of just, you know, like you said, forces them down that depth chart and will probably be a special teamer um, and just be a guy that will be uh you know, a mentor to all the young guys to make sure that they understand how his dad coaches or, you know, how, how to work hard, how, how to be a, you know, a good student athlete, something like that. I think maybe he just likes to have these multiple different college experiences. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, he's going to have four different college experiences in one college career uh, with four different universities over a five year span. Um, but because like, if you look at his numbers, he's, he's the freshman year, at uh, 17 total tackles then he went to 39 then 19 last year he had 67 so last year was without a doubt his best season of his collegiate career um and as you mentioned how it's just with that with the depth in that linebacker room i know his dad's a defensive coordinator now and that's fun and it's a cool story for him to play for his dad and he gets to see his fourth university in five years which has got to be a fun time too but i feel like he picked the wrong time to to transfer because uh, I, I i also see him as a depth slash special teamer uh, at Oklahoma, and it seems like he just had a pretty darn good year at App State. Um, but, you know, we'll see. Maybe he'll prove us all wrong, and he'll light it up next year. Anything for a quality special teamer at the end of the day. I mean, I mean, after what we went through last year, if he can play great special teams, you can find your way on an NFL roster if you can play great special teams. So um, we'll see. Glad to have him. I mean, never going to complain about getting a transfer and getting some – a new athlete on campus. Um, so we'll move on to the defensive backs. All right. So we'll talk first. I mean, we'll talk first about the, you know, there's three guys, you know, Jay Valai, Jay Valai has. Jay Valai had a hell of a recruiting weekend. <laughs> yeah. Well, him and Brandon Hall, you know, the safeties coach, they, you know, it just depends on where they're going to go. 
Uh, we'll start off with Trey Morrison. He's five foot nine, 190 pound cornerback from the University of North Carolina. Um, he came in the 2018 class. He was a three star, number 808 overall, number 69 athlete. Um, in his career, he's had 163 total tackles, three sacks, one forced fumble, and two picks. He'll have one year of eligibility. He started for the Tar Heels, a guy that's played for four years. He's getting that COVID, uh, you know, that COVID eligibility extra year instant leadership you know been through about everything you know played clemson quite a bit the guy you know he might be a little bit smaller on the other side but with how you know talented and how he can match up with the different you know defenders and whatnot he makes up for it and it's something that the sooners definitely need especially with latrell mccutcheon entering into the transfer portal Mm -hmm. um i think it's a big time get brandon what do you think yeah for sure you mentioned that you know his four years at, at North Carolina. I think that, that, that to me is the biggest takeaway. Uh, just, he's going to have that veteran presence, you know, be able to talk to some of these young guys coming in uh, about, you know, all aspects of the game, uh, what he would do in certain situations that could pay off for them. Um, you know, I, 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 I don't know exactly where he's going to fit in, in next year right away. Uh, I think Woody Washington uh, is probably penciled in as a starter. Um, I imagine Key Lawrence going to get a lot of snaps too, but uh, you know this kid can push for push for a lot of playing time, uh, play in the slot, play. You know maybe he starts over Billy Bowman in the slot or something. I, he's he's definitely got the ability to do it. Um, he's got good career numbers at North Carolina, like as you mentioned, played against Clemson a couple times or all four years. Um, good veteran leadership. Uh, excited to have him in. See what see what he can do in in, in his one year at Oklahoma. This is the guy I'm actually the most excited about, and I think he's going to have the biggest impact on the defense next year. He has experience at Nickelback his first two years at uh, UNC. He, I believe he started at Nickel, or at least played. Uh, that was his role. But then his last two years as being as a Tar Heel was at safety. And if you just check it out on YouTube, just search Trey Morrison UNC highlights, this dude's not scared. Like, hit, don't. Oh, because he's so small in regards to his stature, just being five, nine, like that doesn't mean anything to him. And I think that's what I love the most about watching all of the highlight videos I did of him. He will make sure that he lays you down. If he gets, if if he gets you, if he gets to you, see a better version of Brendan Radley Hiles. He's what Oklahoma wanted Brendan Radley Hiles to be. (laughs) And like, for real, this dude is a mauler. Like you watching him play, like, I for real like go check out check out his YouTube video highlights he looks like Derwin James with how hard he hits just obviously smaller than him and that is gonna be huge because if you know we do have situations where a corner gets burnt which we obviously we hope doesn't happen he will be there to lay you out if you get to the ball yeah I mean there's going to be Gosh, you can't pencil him in anywhere because, I mean, we lost both safeties. Um, you know, cornerback position, yeah, you have Woody Washington and DJ Graham, but that nickel position, there's going to be competition. Yeah, he could be anywhere, really. Like you said, he played. he's played in multiple spots, and it's versatility and experience that is invaluable with this – you know, this wonder if you slide staff. Key Lawrence and then and, and Trey Morrison and then and into the starting safety spot for next year. And that way we can keep Billy Bowman at the nickel spot, which we all feel is – his most natural and best position on the field. I feel like that's a decent, that's a, that's definitely a possibility. Although I wouldn't mind seeing key push DJ Graham for that starting spot at corner. Cause I think he did a hell of a job at corner, but that's, that's for another time. Yeah, for sure. It's going to be interesting to see. Yeah. I'm really excited about Trey Morrison being on campus. I'm glad that, you know, they were able to lock him down quick and didn't let him, you know, go anywhere else because yeah. something we definitely needed, whether he's a safety or a nickel or an outside corner, doesn't matter to me just one of the five five or six spots depending on what they're what they're playing um so uh okay so another guy another corner is uh cj colden he's a six foot one 175 pound cornerback from the university of wyoming he was originally from bell belleville illinois um he had 48 tackles 10 pass breakups in 2021 he visited the sooners this weekend and committed and so another guy that has played a ton of snaps. I believe he will have one year of eligibility left because um, mm-hmm. he came in the 2017 uh, recruiting class. So he'll have one year. So there's another guy, you know, he played at Wyoming. He has a ton of experience. 
uh, a little bit bigger, you know, six foot one. So he's got a few more inches. He definitely will probably be in the rotation for that corner, you know, corner spot. Um, Jose, what do you think about Colden and what he brings? I think if anyone's going to challenge the returning DBs or cornerbacks for a starting position, it's going to be this guy. He's, I mentioned it last time, he's very aggressive at the point of, of the catch and very much like Trey. He's going to be a dude that will make sure you know he's there. And that's seems like that's where the defense is transitioning to, very much hard hitting, making sure that you're scared. Of, go, of putting your body on the line for that football. And CJ, he might not be, you know, a guy like you know, maybe Jalen Ramsey, who's always getting, has an opportunity for an interception, but this guy's definitely going to make sure that he's in position to at least get his hand on the ball and make sure that he's preventing the catch. Um, and if not laying you out, because he, he's just that kind of aggressive, he has that aggressive mentality and that he brings to playing football, which is, I think, the most fun to watch, especially on defense. Like, if you're on defense and you're playing soft, you should probably be playing offense because you need someone that's going to that's gonna want to lay, lay out the, the wide receiver or running back. Yeah, I agree. I mean, so, size, speed, instincts. Uh, first thing, you know, the things that come to mind when you're talking about C.J. Colden. Uh, Ten pass breakups uh, last year is – that's a pretty damn big number uh, for, for a DB. Uh, obviously he's seeing the ball. Well, he's, you know, as, as Jose mentioned in, in the last video, uh, didn't have any interceptions, but 10 pass breakups is just as good. Um, at the end of the day, he's not allowing the receiver to catch the ball. Uh, he had 67 tackles uh, total last year, 48 solo. Uh, so as Jose mentioned, he can lay the wood a little bit. Um, yeah. He, he can definitely push, push for that, push for one of those spots. And if not, he's definitely going to be a guy who's rotated in uh early and often, um, you know, third down nickel package type situations. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's fun to have this much depth at, at that spot now uh, with guys that, that I think we all trust and, and think could be pretty damn good because, you know, in years past, if the starting corners are, are getting beat out there, we're kind of just screwed. Uh, and I think that, I think that could be different now with, with, with these additions. Exactly. I mean, it puts, it puts the guys like, well, if I don't do my job, there's someone just as good as me that's going to get a shot. Now, they're not going to leave me in all game. And I think that's a big, big, big deal for sure. I agree. So, um, no, I mean, Morrison and Colin, instant leadership, instant experience, great, great pickups. Now, a younger guy uh, that the Sooners picked up um, is Kenny Walker. He's a six foot one, 175 pound corner from Louisville. He's originally from Swanee, Georgia. He was in the 2021 class. He was a three-star, number 849 overall, number 69 cornerback. Um, OU offered on the 12th. Uh, he visited this weekend, and he committed uh, this weekend as well to the Sooners. He appeared in four games in the 2021 season for the Cardinals. But in doing that, he maintained his eligibility because he sat out of the bowl game, which is a very, very smart you know, business decision that he made. And, you know, I know there was a few people that commented and we even kind of talked about it like, well, if this kid is leaving Louisville after one year and, you know, after taking his red shirt, why, why do we want him? And I just want to say that Louisville thought he was going to compete for a starting position at the cornerback or safety position. And so I think what he realized was he could start there, but he has the he had the ability or the potential to go to a bigger, bigger program. And he was just betting on himself. I think Brandon said it on the last video or one of whatever video we talked about him. It's just a guy betting on himself to go play at a bigger and better program. And no offense to the Louisville. I mean, they've developed great NFL athletes and talent, but Oklahoma is just a different level. And I don't blame the kid for betting on himself. He's going to have four years of eligibility. He's, he's really the first, guy that Valai has gotten that will that wants to be with him for the next three or four years and it didn't take him long uh brandon do you have something to say about walker and his potential hey you're muted you're muted he's he's definitely the most raw of the um you know the kids who just committed over the weekend and uh in, in general on the roster at the moment i would say he's the most raw uh you know, hasn't played as much as the other guys on, on, on roster or the other guys who have just transferred in. Um, but obviously, you know, if Jay Valai likes him, he's going to have three or four years to sit under Jay Valai. 
uh, learn from him, learn from some of these guys in front of him uh, who are pretty darn good. And I think, you know, Woody Washington, I think is pretty damn good. Um, Key Lawrence, I think is pretty damn good. I think some of these transfer kids could be pretty damn good. Um, you know, if he, if, if he, if he takes everything in, uh, takes the advice of these guys ahead of him, uh, takes the advice of a lie, he really just, you know, sponge and just soaks it all in and learns as much as he can. I think he, I think he has the ability to have a, a pretty darn good career at, at Oklahoma. I, I don't, uh, envision him having a huge role next year. Uh, just, you know, with how raw he is and, uh, just with the room kind of filling out and being kind of deep. Um, but you know, I think if he if it pans out and stuff, we could have a nasty uh, defensive back room with Robert Spears Jennings and Jaden Rowe and and and, and Kenny Walker. Uh, you know, these young guys that Billy Bowman fits in that category too. Although Billy Bowman's going to play a lot next year, but you know, I think yeah, uh, if they grow together and you know, kind of come up together, I, th- I think they could be special and it's, it's, it's exciting. Yeah, the I agree with most of what you said about uh, Walker. He's definitely going to be a lot more development and I'm not, I don't think he's going to have that much of an impact if any next year, he might get to play in some of those early season games um, where it's more practice and seeing what the rotation is going to be. But to me, this is going to be the biggest challenge that and fun to watch over the next couple of years for Valai, because as we've mentioned before, when we talked about that coach, he hasn't been at any program for longer than one year. So we really don't know what his coaching is like in regards to development and how he makes players better over the long term rather than just in the immediate um, season. So if uh, can I or can he goes and goes from this player that none of us expect to be a starter on his first season as a Sooner and maybe next year in two years, he's one of our best defensive backs or a guy that we can definitely see be an impactful player over the next two, three years after this year then that just shows that this was the right hire and it's more of a challenge for coach Valai than it is a challenge for Kenny to get a starting position in my eyes, because it, I, that's something that I w- I have concerns about in regards to coach Valai is how can you develop this talent? Like that's something that we're coming from where talent wasn't really developed or at least put in position to gain its full potential. And why, why, why are you the guy that's going to get, get us to the next level in the defensive back position because that's one place where we've struggled for a long time and as fans we want to see completely turn around and and hopefully start having first second third round picks go into the nfl rather than you know sixth and seventh or undrafted free agents even though it might be disrespectful i mean that that's just what the situation has been over the last few years at oklahoma yeah Bring back I, the I will. williams yeah I will add, as far as the depth in that outside corner position, so Jaden Davis is transitioning into that nickel spot as well. So outside of Woody Washington and DJ Graham on the roster is Joshua Eaton. They bring in um, Colden and Morrison. So now you've got five guys for the two spots. Could Walker maybe get a rotation? I don't know. What about Justin Broyles? Broyles is – didn't he – isn't he more is he of the nickel? Or is he, I, he's, I don't know. He's kind of played everywhere. Yeah, he's kind of played he's everywhere. Kind of just thrown into the fire and kind of just plays. You know, it's, you're asking it's me. loaded, dude. There's so many. I feel like the, like the, there's so many defensive backs. Yeah, you're, you're asking me about Broyles now on the spot. I'm like, wait, is he? Well, of course, COVID has kind of messed it all up as far yeah. as. But I, I, I'm not 100% sure if he's. I think they have him listed as a safety right now. I mean, he's a senior last year. He um he played four years, so he might still be on the roster. I'm not 100 percent sure. If you guys, if I think you he guys is, know, but yeah, just from the know. way he the way he acts on Twitter and stuff, I feel like he's coming back for next season. Yeah, he probably is. So I mean, so you bring in a guy like Walker, he could end up being a safety. I don't know. I mean, it just depends on where where they can you know fill fill in and where they need to be. But yeah, I think you're right. I think I think Broyles is going to be on the roster now that you mention it, but. So I just want to say to wrap this all up, you know, we, we briefly talked about each one of these guys. If you guys are new to this channel, basically what we're going to do all off season, we're going to do what we call who dads, where we're going to really go in depth for each individual person and really break down what we think they You're can You're going provide. to find out like what hostel they were born at, what time, what their <laughs> sign is, what their favorite <laughs> artist is, basically, uh, favorite I mean, food. Yeah. We're going to go deep into these athletes that we we're, love so much. 
where their hometown, you know, where they grew up at, you know, who their best friend is and what everything yeah. else. So really in depth and they're going to be individual videos targeted on each transfer, each new commit, each, you know, freshman or senior or whatever it is as we go through this off season. So while this was quick, there's going to be a lot more information on these guys. It's just, it's too much to go through right now. And we're trying to get as much content out to you. So uh, Brandon, do you have an end of video challenge for everyone? Yeah. Before we, before we wrap everything up, I do want to say by the time this video is released, uh, OU will be playing Kansas tonight. Um, get your ass to the Lloyd Noble center. If you're close or watch it on ESPN, I, th I think we're playing ESPN tonight. Um, if you can't, uh, the Sooners are looking to get back on track. They've had a couple couple of close losses. It'd be awesome to go out and knock out Kansas and Baylor in the same week. Uh, it all starts tonight against Kansas. Um, so be sure to support the boys as they take on the Jayhawks. Uh, we'd like to knock them off. Um, and the video challenge. Okay, end the video challenge. Let's do, of all the guys that we just mentioned on the show tonight, and we talked about the Who Dat series, Who's the first one that you guys want us to see go in depth on, or it could be a guy we haven't mentioned yet um, on the show. Uh, we haven't really gone in depth on any of the incoming commits or transfers. Um, who's the very first guy you guys want to see uh, go in depth on, on the who that segment. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, you heard him definitely comment and let us know who you want us to cover first. Jose, do you have anything to add before we wrap this up? No. Okay. All right. You know, a lot of you guys have been coming back. You've been watching our videos. We can tell, but we're still only like 25% of you are subscribing. Subscribe, hit that notification bell. We've been seeing more people have been turning on the notification bell. We, we're going to be posting regularly, you know, two, three, four times a week, just depending on the amount of news that's coming out. And you want to make sure that you're, you know, staying in touch and, and getting updated as, as the information is coming out. So we really appreciate it. Like the video, comment on the video. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Two Plane Sports. Find us on Spotify. We'll be on Apple Podcasts soon. Um, you know, I don't blame you for not looking at us, um, but you know, let us know who you who you're wanting us to cover first in depth. And we've got more commits potentially, and maybe by the time this is being released and you guys are watching this, we might have more. And we're going to we be might have a Jackson Dart on campus. We might, or a, maybe Taylor a Michael Poo. Trigg. Yeah, Caleb Poo. So uh, we really appreciate it. We're going to keep the the content coming your way and we'll catch you guys next time.